Hello and welcome to another edition of Attract Well Office Hours. I'm Coach Ashley. Today we are joined, as always, by our founder, Greg Kilwine. Hey, Greg. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, everybody. Excited to have you here today, everyone. We are thrilled to be bringing to you uh, a very first glance at uh, kind of a makeover uh, that our page builder has gotten. Uh, there's a lot of really exciting things that you can now do with it. Uh, obviously, you've been able to make amazing pages for your site, your sales pages, uh, pages for your funnel, a homepage for your website, any kind of page that you want to build a thing on on our website. You've probably done some pretty cool stuff with already if you have gotten started because it's really easy and simple to use. Well, now if you ever wanted to dial in and create little floaty sections or put forms on the page and not just in a pop-up, uh, you want video backgrounds, you want to fine tune exactly where the columns sit on your pages, all kinds of really, really cool stuff. Uh, we're gonna learn how to do that today on this call. Uh, so just a quick bit of housekeeping. This is a free call that we offer every week. Uh, this uh, Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time. You can go to attractwell.com forward slash office hours to join an upcoming call. If you'd like to work with us on an upcoming call, if you want a review of your site, if you want to optimize your marketing, if you want eyes on what you're doing uh, and you just want a little bit more than just the email, if you need support, uh, then please sign up for a live session here. You get dedicated space on an upcoming call like we're having here today. And that is attractwell.com forward slash work review all one word so we hope to see you on one of those in the future but for now uh let's uh, let's talk about all these amazing page builder capabilities greg yeah let's do it i'm i'm pretty excited so um to show off all these new capabilities i'm going to go over some of the basics a little bit too here um since some of you here might not be familiar with what all it can do um there's so much to do i don't think we'd be able to cover it in an hour i'm going to try to keep it brief here but um, I will kick it off by sharing my screen. Um, we want to stop our video too for the recording mm -hmm. and then, okay, stop my video. I accidentally stopped screen sharing again, not my first time. <laughs> here we go. Okay. Uh, here's the Attractable dashboard. So uh, for those of you, kind of, if you're just maybe getting started with the system um, or maybe you've had a site for a while and you really haven't done much with the website, portion of it. So the website that comes like kind of out of the box with Attractwell, uh, it's pretty simple. You can manage it by going to my story and photo and put your uh, put an image on there and put some text on there and a headline. Pretty straightforward. There's a contact me button. If you'd like to build a custom site, though, you absolutely can. That can be done with this little magical link over here that says pages. And that opens up a, a variety of options for you. And you can set the site as your home page. You can um, you can edit the menu, as you can see here. You can uh, make a whole site, make hidden pages that you can only get through, get to by a link. Um, there's a really a lot you can do with the page builder, and that's that's just the website portion of it. The page builder can also put for, have a form on there where people can fill out information. You can put custom fields on there, like if you want to collect information for, say, maybe you've got a new client that's coming on, uh, and you want to get their background and have that saved into their contact. Um, you can also take payments on the page builder. Uh, and now you can actually really make the design super fancy too, because there's some, I'll, I'll show you some of the new changes that are coming up here. Um, but in the quick overview here, the page builder, um, you click on pages, you can create a new page. I'll click that in a minute. Or if you happen to have a page that's already there, you can just click it to edit it or click it to view it. Uh, you can make a duplicate of it or delete it if you want to get rid of it. There is a short page builder tutorial um, as well, which does cover, this has been updated to cover these latest changes. Um, so it'll be kind of a, this is a shorter version of essentially what I'm going to cover today, uh, the super duper basics. And there's also in the help center down here, you see the custom page builder comes up. If you click on that, there is an article here that actually has three videos in it that you can watch there too. So you don't have to rely just on this. It's going to be a lot of information today. So um, don't, don't worry about trying to contain it all in your brain. Um, a lot of this is something that you could uh, easily play around with too. And, you know, cause it's mostly styles and, and the ability to reformat the page and do some interesting things with that. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new page. You see, it pops up uh, a variety of templates that can go um, that you can choose to start with. There is a new one here, this Cassie template. This one is new that kind of coordinated with this update that we had, um, but I'm gonna choose this homepage template. 
um, as I'm pretty familiar with that one and it works really well for what I'm gonna show you. First of all, you'll see this pop-up that comes up. It's got the little video that I mentioned earlier that had the link on there. Um, and then um, there's, if you don't want to see what's, you know, if you don't want to see this pop up again, just click that and hit down and it'll go away. Um, but there's also the link to the help library article if you want that. So it gives you the little overview as you're diving in the first time, uh, first few times you come in until you check that box. Uh, so the, the quick overview of how this works, the page builder in general, this is the template that comes here. And so you can anywhere as you're mousing over and this works on a mobile device too, you can like press and hold. Uh, and move your finger around on the page and it'll allow you to see this little yellow hover. Basically anywhere that you click, it's going to pop up a little box where you can, you know, on that yellow, showing what's in the yellow highlighted section um, and allowing you to edit it. For, so for example, if I wanna change this headline, um, you know, maybe I wanna put an exclamation mark there or something like that, um, or, or change it entirely, I can do that. Any of these sections you can click on and then um, edit works for, for this. So. Some of the basics with editing, um, let me show you down here. So this is, maybe I'll edit this whole section at once. Uh, you know, it's got a, a toolbar up here with kind of the standard stuff in it, you know, bold, italic, underline, font, font family, color. There's this little icon here that allows you to expand. Uh, this menu is really broken into like four pieces. The ones with the dots on them have a little menu that appears under them. So like, you know, there's some other things in here about background color and pasting plain text additional formatting options, um, uploading files, that sort of thing can, can appear under there. Um, the main things I'd probably call your attention to, inserting link, you know, so if you highlight something, oops, <clears throat> if I highlight something and click insert link, it'll allow me to put a URL in there. Uh, if I want a video, or if I want to add an image, click on the add image, either click here or drop one on there, or you can click browse. If you happen to have a um, some images uploaded to your, library already, um, every image you do upload comes in here, then you can just reuse that same image. Uh, and then if you have a video, just click here and paste in the URL and hit insert. Uh, so that's, that's really kind of the basics now. Um, and, and well, one other thing I'll show you with the images, if you have a picture like this, you can click on it, it'll show the little panel, and then you can replace it with a new image, uh, change the alignment, remove it, you can even link to it, uh, as well as change size. So one tip I recommend is, you know, if you want an image to be uh, filling its full space, you can actually come into the width and type like 100% and uh, update that. And then that will go ahead and um, make it full width no matter what it is that you're doing. I'll just undo that for now. Um, yeah, so, all right. So with that, let me don't, uh, dive into some of the other changes here that you um, may not have seen before. I'll close this panel for the moment. Um, so you saw the edit mode where you can just click, but there's this new little toolbar up here. I'll call your attention to that. Um, and you can preview now. So if you wanna look at your website and see what it looks like on these different device sizes, you can do that. So um, you can see how, how it kind of works here as we're, as we're scrolling. Uh, and then you can change it and see, oh, I want it, what does it look like on a tablet? And you can look, see what it looks like on a tablet and even size it down to a phone here as well and see what it looks like on a phone. Or you can just go directly to that from here. So this is a really a big improvement because you don't have to save your change now and view your page to see what it actually looks like on, as a final result. And you can see it on different device sizes without having to go play around um, with different devices or resizing your browser window like you did before. So that's, that's a really a big time saver as I've been playing around with this that really it's huge when it comes to saving some time. Um, some of the other, uh, there's this panel is new too here, but let me go over some of these um, other buttons over here. So in addition to being able to edit what's there, you can move these sections around. Like if I want, uh, for example, I want this about me to be there, I'll move it up. Uh, you can see it's gonna put it up under there instead of down there, I'll just move it back down. Um, you can make a duplicate of the section if you click this little copy icon. Uh, you can see now I have a, a copy of that section. I'll just delete my copy here. Um, and then uh, you can add sections as well. Like if I would like to add something in the middle, let me click the plus sign in the middle. And then, you know, for example, I could add this uh, two column section in the middle. Maybe I want another one in here. That's this three column. It's got some, some placeholder text in there that I can deal with. Uh, maybe I want to move it around, move it up, down, that sort of thing. So that's how you kind of get around there. I will go ahead and delete these sections because I don't need them for the, 
for this purpose. Um, and there's a variety of settings under settings here. I'll dive into that a little bit more later. You wanna check those out, make sure you give your page a name, title bar, and so on. Uh, if this is a page that you wanna have as your homepage of your website, this little down, uh, drop down arrow is super handy for that. Click on that, click on make this my site's homepage, and then voila, your website will change. Uh, when you go to view your main website, it will um, display whatever page that you have there. And of course, saving it and viewing it. Um, this is you know, essentially the final product when you click on view. Uh, so I already showed you how to edit the content uh, that's on the page here. There's a few other, um, a few other editing modes here that I wanna show you. So this, this allows you to edit the content. For example, I click here, it creates this pop-up. It does open the style panel as well over here for the element itself, kind of this larger yellow box that I've got there kind of highlighting what I've been editing. If you don't want that to, if you're not interested in editing the colors or the, the content and you just wanna edit um, the styles, that's where this little magic wand comes in. You can click in here and edit those individual items. You can see how that's sort of updated once I clicked on that. Uh, as I'm clicking around these different areas, it'll update this panel to reflect whatever it is that you're working on. Uh, so those are the two modes there. One little tip is you're, if you're in this element uh, style editing mode and you wanna edit, the text, for example, if I'm like, oh, I, I want to change this headline or something, double click it, it'll pop it open, and then you can edit it and quickly, you know, stay editing your styles. Um, so it's, good, it's handy if you want to make a little change or swap out an image without having to come up here and change back to the content editor. Uh, this button, edit columns, this is also new. This uh, is a huge time saver when it comes to reformatting your page a little bit. So you click on edit columns. Anywhere that there is, there are some columns that you can edit you'll get this little box that appears around, this little border will appear around what you can edit. And you can see there's a couple of sections here that have that background in there. So um, you can see what's happening there and where you can click. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in here and you can see this panel on the right-hand side changes to reflect, okay, it's got the two columns over here uh, and, and this is the size that they are. So in this case, it's um, a, a row essentially has 12 spaces, so to speak, uh, and, and you can, determine how big the columns are. In this case, the six wide, six of the spaces wide, so it's half the size of the page that we have here. Mm -hmm. So, but what you can do with the column editor, let's say you would you um, wanted to add a second person onto your website and you're editing this very section. You can shrink this down, maybe make it three and three, and then um, what I'm gonna do here is I'll make a duplicate of this one and of this one. Uh, and now you can even reorder them. You can use the arrows to reorder, but you can actually even drag these if you'd like. Um, so you can easily reformat these or it's like, oops, I added too many. Let me delete a column. Um, or if you just wanna add a blank column, I can hit add column here if there's space. It's a little hard to read with this background color, but it does say new column up here. I'd be able to um, change over to one of these modes and click on it and then edit the text there. So. The column editor is very useful for making some speedy changes. Like now I can delete my third column that I've added there, uh, bump this back up to six and six, or maybe this, maybe it should be six and nine, you know? So it's like, you can play around with the, play around with this a little bit more, or maybe you want to swap this around, oops, uh, swap it around so that the picture's on the right and come in here and right align the text. Uh, so there's just all sorts of possibilities. Like this is another common layout. Um, if I were to duplicate this, instead of doing them left to right, like I was showing you, this could be a good case for, oops, I need to switch over and click on this one. Um, anyway, this could be a good case for coming in here and making it so that um, they're alternating as far as the person is concerned. So you could have you know left and right format like this um, for your people to just create some visual interest and maybe change the background color or something like that. So. That's the column editing mode. That's brand new. That's uh, very, a huge time saver. Uh, so next I'm gonna show you uh, some of how, how the styles work. Um, in addition to all of these style changes that you're gonna see here, all these abilities to edit the styles, there's some exciting changes to the forms and lead capture uh, that I'll be talking about too once I get through this. So I'm gonna switch back over to the style editor mode here and maybe get rid of my extra section that I don't need um, for this sake. And uh, I'll, just, I'll just click on this. So let's say for the purposes of this example, I, I would like to uh, create some, you know, like oh, maybe this text, I'm thinking this text is a little too hard to read. I wanna create a little separation between the background image um, and the text. 
I can do that by, and I had clicked on this uh, yellow panel there, or it's not actually yellow, but the, this panel that surrounds the whole area. And uh, maybe I'll just increase the background color opacity a little bit. Um, so it creates a little bit of a barrier there. And maybe I'll change this to black. So it's a lot easier to read. And well, maybe I don't need the opacity quite so much. Um, but you can see how that makes it a little bit easier to read the text at this point. And then the um, you can even blur the background. Like if you'd like to do that, it adds a background blur on here. Um, so it even makes it easier to read what's on top. Um, and you know you can play around with these settings, what it to kind of dial it in based on the text color and the background color and the image color that you have. Um, but as you can see here, it really makes for kind of a nice looking effect. It does show up in preview. So I'll show you this. This is really neat because it also works with the parallax. As I'm scrolling, uh, the parallax is where the background moves at a different speed than the foreground. So it really creates some visual distinction, like there's a, a layer there. So as I'm moving this up and down, you can see how that blur and the background color, um, they expose different parts of the image as you're scrolling, which is a, a really nice effect. You've probably seen that on other people's websites. So now you can easily create that here too um, with, this, with this background color. Uh, the animation, that is not new. That was there before, but you can animate elements too. Um, and again, uh, or one thing to note here is I'm, I'm working on this outside box, but this really works for any element in the middle. Like if I would want to put a background on this, for example, like on the, just in the headline, I'll hit add as a shortcut. You can see you can even layer them if you'd like. This maybe doesn't look so great, um, but you, know, you could play maybe in this case, maybe I'd play with the padding a little bit to make it look a little bit better. Um, Anyway, I'll remove the, the background color and reset my padding here for this, but um, you can see how that works. I'll continue to play around with this, this box here. Uh, the padding I just showed you that just, you know, put some space in the top, bottom, left, or right, uh, depending on what you want. If you want to spread out the padding a little bit more, you can. The margin, this is a way of adjusting on the top and the bottom. Um, previously, you'd have to use like the enter key, uh, something like that to make changes to spacing. And, and that got a little tricky because sometimes it wasn't the right size. Well, this allows you to really fine tune that spacing, padding, margin, margin, that sort of thing. The rounded corners is really fun. This, uh, if you're into this sort of look, you can easily apply that on your site now. The rounded corners, I'll, I'll drag the little slider. It's doing all the corners at once. But you can see you can create essentially any size rounded corner that you would like um, from completely square to, you know, maybe just slightly rounded to, you know, completely oval as far as it'll allow you to go. Uh, and you can choose whether or not to edit them all at once, which does allow you to create some interesting, uh, interesting looking shapes. So you could maybe do something like that if you wanted to, um, you know, so you can play around with that, have some different, different rounded corners and different sizes. Um, you know, it does change the shapes, which is, Really kind of fun. Uh, I'll go back to a mostly square corner. I think it was actually square, but it doesn't really matter. The uh, element shadow, what this does, next property here, uh, it puts a shadow behind whatever it is, uh, you know, technically a, a shadow behind the container that it's in. So in this case, it's a square, uh, a square background. Well, it does, it does, you know, if I zoom in here, you can see it does follow the rounded corners of that element. Um, but you can play around with these settings. Let's say I wanna make this white because that's gonna add a little pop. It makes it visually stand out from the background a little bit more like it's kind of like it's glowing um, versus being darker. And then I can play around with like the blur intensity, uh, how big it is, you know, does it spread out farther, narrower? You can even change it so that it casts here. Let me make it, um, let me make this really easy to see. Like if I change blur intensity to zero, it actually uh, makes it look like a border, which is interesting. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you what this does here with this left, right. So you can adjust where the shadow is cast. Like if you want to have the shadow down into the right, um, that can be done as well. So I'm just going to put this back here to um, zero on both of these. And one little tip, you can use your arrow keys if you'd like, click on it. Um, and then you can use your arrow keys to adjust those lighters if you want to do something a little more fine grain. Uh, so I'll put the blur back in here just to show you what this might look like. Uh, I showed you how to change the color, the opacity, essentially how transparent or not is that background shadow. So you can just dial it in and make it super subtle like this. Like in this case, to me anyway, 
it looks like there's a slight glow on there, but it's not obvious that there's this big shadow behind there or anything like that. Um, drop shadow is very related, it's similar. Uh, I'll show you the difference here. The drop shadow is really more for text. This works really well on text. Like if I click on this text and I put in this element shadow, you'll see it puts a little box around everything. And that's really, I don't find that a nice look. Um, you know, maybe it fits potentially what you're doing too, but I'll remove that. And instead I'll put this drop shadow on there and you can see more easily what that did here. Now I put that little, um, you know, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that it created a, a shadow that surrounds every little stroke of the font there. Um, so it makes it, you know, really provides a nice little glowing effect. I'll put it white uh, to really create a glow effect. This blur intensity and the uh, opacity and the color and the position all apply here as well. There isn't a, a slider for how wide it is given the nature of this type of shadow. Um, but as you can see here between the opacity, the intensity and the uh, color created something that's a very subtle glow um, as a nice little touch without being too obvious like something's going on. Um, Here's another example on a button. Let me click the button. Let me add a, a drop shadow because it is a square thing. I'll make it, actually I'm gonna use, this is Chrome. Every, every browser's color picker is a little bit different. So if you're using Safari or Firefox, this is different. But in Chrome, there's this little eyedropper tool. Uh, I can come over here and make a little pink shadow uh, or whatever color that is to match that. And then, um, you know, maybe I wanna, actually I did the drop shadow. I wanna do the, I wanna do the element shadow because there's that extra, um, setting for the spread on there. So let me let me go back over here and reselect my color, and then uh, I'll make it a little more intense, kind of spread it out a little bit, and then maybe dial back the opacity by hair. Um, so now we have a nice little glow effect again behind this button without having to do a whole lot of work to make that uh, blend in. So just some you can add some subtle touches or some really um, very vibrant touches as well if you'd like. So. Those are the shadows. Those can, you know, again, those can be on anything if you want to put a shadow on here. We could put a, a shadow on both of these, um, both those pictures and make them stand out. Maybe I want to have this headline um, glow a little bit. Maybe I should use white on this one instead of, uh, whoops, wrong one. I got to come down here to drop shadow. Um, maybe I want to use white on that to make it a little bit more, a little more subtle. Um, so anyway. The uh, opacity moving on to that, what that is, I'll demonstrate maybe on this element again, this fades in or out the whole thing. Like if I want this to just be slightly faded out, um, I can just kind of fade it away to complete nothing if I want to, or fade it back in. This also again works on individual items like this. Like if I want this button to be faded in or out, I can just, oops, um, I can just fade that in a little bit or yeah, so. That's something you can play around with it. That could be, you know, a useful effect if you're layering images. Like if you want, for example, if you want this image to be slightly transparent for some reason, if there's a background pattern that you'd like to just to peek through there, it can create this sort of multi-layered effect that's um, quite nice sometimes. Um, we come back up here, go back down to opacity. Uh, so in addition to all those other settings, you can uh, create borders. I'll choose a color here that's. Uh, Pretty easy to see. Let me go with a, something like this. Um, whoops, I actually have to go with a more vivid color. So it's really easy to see. And then I'll change the, um, the width here so you can see what's going on. Uh, so the borders, you know, by default, they apply to all. You can, you can change the width, you can change the opacity if you want to make them slightly transparent as well. And you can actually uh, edit them all at once or individually. Now, if I combine that with my rounded corners, let me come back up here and really make this rounded again. Um, I'll come back down here to borders. I could, for example, now that I've unchecked edit all at once, let's say I want the left and the right borders to go away. Um, that's an interesting look there. You could, you know, that might be what you're interested for, interested in, or maybe you just want a, a one-sided call out kind of effect here. Um, you could do that maybe left and right, I don't know. So anyway, just some ideas. Um, you don't have to do these things, but as you can see like that, that background glow is following the shape of it too. So that's, uh, you know, it really does make it look nice and tie it all together. Um, assuming you use probably a different color than this, <laughs> um, but um, I'll, I'll take that away and remove my rounded shadow uh, or rounded corner, I mean, um, to kind of restore it to the way that it was. Um, also probably just get rid of this 
background, what I what did I put in there? The background color or something. Um, I don't remember what I what I put in here to make that that way. But anyway, moving on to the next piece, uh, position adjustment. So this is really awesome if you'd like to nudge something around. Let's say um, let's say you're looking at this and with this let's say this black background is something you wanted in there, um, and you're like, oh, I wish this text were more centered between the headline and the button. Well, previously you could come in here and like double click on it and maybe press enter. Um, Okay, that looks okay, but that's still not quite right. Um, so maybe what I'll do in this case, I'm gonna click on it and then I'll do the position adjustment and just move it slightly. So now I can more easily center it with just kind of moving it around a tiny little bit. Um, you can also go left and right if you'd like, um, you know, if you wanna offset it, but this is something if you play around with the position adjustment, check it on a mobile, you know, all the preview sizes, all the device sizes, because sometimes this will cause it to go off the screen. Because I could, for example, with this headline, go like that, um, and it'll slide it to the left or to the right. Um, you can see it does kind of slide to the side there. Um, so anyway, and rotation. This is uh, well. I can. I'll show you that with this whole element. Like I can take the whole element and kind of shove it off the screen to the left or the right. Uh, up and down, it doesn't. I don't think quite go that far, uh, but it's enough to just. My recommendation is to use this position adjustment for fine tuning things. Like if, you know, if this headline is something and you really wanted that box back there, uh, maybe make it so that it, you know, something looks something like this. So there's a little more even spacing at the top uh, and the bottom there. So I'll reset this here. Uh, and uh, next up, I've got rotation, which is really, I think it's kind of fun. Uh, again, this applies to any element. You can rotate it whatever direction you want to from just, you know, nothing to slight to, you know, you could do a 90 degree uh, straight up and down or even flip it upside down if you wanted to. That might be kind of a, a fun attention grabber in some cases. Um, it works. Sometimes it works nicely with images. Uh, if you want to rotate an image, if you're not quite straight, you know, you can tilt your head. Um, you know, if you're if you have a photo that's crooked or, you know, you can do some kind of fun things with the rotation um, that are also useful as well. So um, just as an example here, like I'll take this and and tilt it. A little bit. Um, get rid of my drop shadow. I don't know. Anyway, um, I think there's a, a background issue in here as well. Let me make the. Anyway, never mind. I will move on here. So uh, the rotation. You can actually take this and like tilt individual pieces. Uh, let's say you want to tilt your button and your headline to match each other. <laughs> you can do that uh, to create some interesting visual effects. You know, like the get in touch button, maybe you want to rotate that one ever so slightly. Um, that one's re rotating around a, um, a border, but if I click on just the button, then I can tilt the button in place. Um, so I had selected the whole line here and it's it was rotating around that whole line versus just there. So something to keep in mind. Size adjustment, this is useful. Uh, I'll reset your uh, reset this button so just straight. This is again, something you probably want to check on a smaller device or on a, on a mobile device as well. But you can take this and scale up anything, um, scale it up, scale it down. It will cause it to um, go off the screen. I'll make it super big here and I'll show you what this does. For example, on a mobile device, as I scroll this down, you can see Get My Free Guide is probably a little oversized for mobile. You could make your own section if you wanted to, um, but it does, um, you know, something to play around with. It's, it's there. Um, usually works better for smaller adjustments, but Again, you could make a copy of it and, and play around with it on different devices, but it's a time saver if you'd like to um, just tweak the size of something quickly without having to go in and change the font and select everything. It just does everything, you know, the whole element, whatever it is that's selected can get scaled up and down pretty easily. And you can see that in this case, like the shadow and everything goes with it, um, which is kind of fun. With um, that's a very, I think it's most useful on buttons. You can play around with it in other cases like it, Given that this has that black background on there, you know, for example, I could change the width. Um, it's not aligning it like I'd like. Um, so I'll just go back to auto. But buttons, it works really well for buttons. Uh, I'll click directly on the button and I'll change the width here. You can see it allows you to uh, make buttons a certain width of this, the percentage of this of the space that's available, I believe. So like 100% is whatever the 100% is inside of its, whatever the container that it's inside of. Uh, but the what the width is useful for on buttons is if you'd like to have, um, for example, I'll come down here. If this planner journey and join the community were buttons instead of text links, 
this could be a nice way to make them uniform in size because by default, when you're working on a button, let me set this back to auto. Um, like if I come in here and double click on it and I say, get my free guide now, whoops. Um, the button gets wider with the text. So it kind of grows and shrinks with the text. Whereas if you put a width on there, then, um, oops, let me go back to this. If you put a width on there, then, um, you know, it will always be that same width and then the text will fit within it. So it's a little different philosophy there, but uh, background image, you can also put a background image on any section. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna put it in this larger section so you can see it, but it actually works even inside of things like buttons or smaller elements. If you just want a little background pattern or something inside of a button, you can do that. So I'm gonna click on this background here, this bigger section and choose my image. I think there should be an image or two here. Uh, hopefully there's one with a transparent background. I think, there, I think there's one in, hopefully there's one in here with, with a transparent background here. Okay, this Jane Jones one I think is, has a transparent background. Uh, you can see that when you have an image that has a transparent background, um, actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fade this away with the um, with the opacity so it kind of gets out of our way a little bit. Um, just keep it slightly there for now so you can see the background image a little bit better. But what this has done, going back down to the background image, um, by default it, it wallpapers it. Um, this is a new setting. Previously, you could only choose between cover and contain, and I'll show you what those mean here in a minute. Um, the, what the wallpaper does, if you have a section or a, an image, I mean, that is like designed to be a repeating background. Let's say it's a kind of a texture of a paper, or maybe a burlap bag or something like that that you want to have back there as a, as a visual design element. Um, you can do that. And it's, as long as a repeating pattern, you can click wallpaper and it will repeat that pattern. Um, over and over and over to fill the space. So I could say, okay, maybe I'm gonna center this. Uh, I wanted a certain width and height, which I've done here and it repeats it. Or you can just do a single one. Like let's say we want it to be um, a single occurrence of that background image and you can have that here. You know, maybe I'll position it up a little bit more. Um, so you could, you know, do something fun like that. And that, you know, the background image in the upper section actually will travel with um, with the background, it's not a part of the parallax uh, underneath it, but um, it's there. So, but let me close this out. And the other two options, the cover, this is more useful. Let's say if I have a, um, like this one here, this, this here would probably be a, a good background um, for cover. What cover does, it makes sure that the entire section or the entire element is covered with that background image. Um, versus contain, which means that contain, it will contain the image within that section showing you the whole image, but then it will put some space if needed on the side or top, depending on, on the shape and how that's working. So, um, and you can position that within the space if you like it up right or left, right, up, down. If it's already the height, uh, it's the center, you know, up and down isn't gonna do anything. Same with left and right, um, because it's, not fully covered there, it's going to um, slide left and right. So um, so that is uh, the element style editor. A lot of cool tools in there. Um, here, let me show you actually one more thing with the buttons. I'll remove this background image from that section. Put this button here. I'm gonna size this up so it's a little easier to see. Uh, and then you can actually take a background image and put that in the button. Um, so, you know, this might be a case where I wanna position it so it's over the sand on that image. Um, maybe try to find a spot that's a little easier to read. Um, you know, like something like this might be kind of fun. Get my free guide now. So um, anyway, something you can play around with. You can make custom buttons uh, as well. That is one, one thing to note with this element style tool. Like if I didn't, um, if I don't like my brand buttons and by default, you can choose from a variety of the brand buttons and customize them. So you have a bunch of ready to go buttons for you, but if you want to customize a one-off one for the page, you definitely can. Like in this case, if I want to add uh, rounded corners to just this one button, I can do that. Or uh, maybe only two corners. So you can really make some, some fun shapes um, combining all these elements into one thing. In this case, it maybe I changed the text so it's black or something like that, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. Well, one other thing I want to show you with images in this element editing tool, um, is that you can crop images and put rounded corners on them now 
without having to go into a graphic tool like Canva or Photoshop to apply those on there. So now uh, what I'm gonna do, I'll demo, demonstrate it on both a rectangular image and a square image. So I'm gonna replace this airplane picture with um, a square image that is in our library here. Um, maybe I'll take this little ninja um, and pop that in there. But now I've got the element style editor tool here. I'll click on this one and then I've got my rounded corners up. So I'll just slide this and you can see it applies the rounded corner to the image without having to go in and crop it in any graphic editing program. Um, so it's a really nice, fast way of doing that. If you have a rectangular image, um, it won't do a full, it, it rounds the corners as much as it can basically. Uh, kind of a nice, uh, nice effect there. You can, just like you can, I showed you with the buttons, you can undo that and then like individually round the corners or not round the corners. Um, so again, you can create some you can play around with this and create some irregular shapes as well. Kind of fun to see how, what it does is you move these sliders around. You can, you know, it, it's moving things to create some kind of fun shapes. Um, but yeah, so you don't have to go into a graphic editing tool either. So this element tool does work really well on images as well as the buttons. Um, you know, for example, if I wanted this to be at the 100% width, I could put that in here and make a really big get in touch button uh, for people to use. Um, or maybe I want to, size up my picture a little bit. So it just goes a little under there, um, add a shadow perhaps, come over here, um, put my element, or in this case, probably a drop shadow on there. Um, yeah, so there's, there's lots of stuff you can do um, with that. I'm sure there's endless infinite design possibilities with this, but um, I'll, I'll, I'm just kind of covering the basics of what's new here. Uh, related to this, the section background is something that you can now control um, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to reload the page. So I have my fresh template to start off with. Um, so I don't have to have some of those edits there, but okay. So if you click on this little pencil icon, this allows you to edit the background of the entire section. So each of these little toolbar panels is, uh, you know, it indicates like, Hey, this is a new section. So you can see that this one has one, two, three, four, five. This web page has five sections on it. Um, so in this top one, um, I'll show you some of the some of what you can do here. Um, this is kind of an advanced feature. We can talk about that probably at a different time. You can change your background color. There's an image on there, so the background color is not really going to show. Um, I'll show you this here, the background image coverage again. So right now it's set to cover, so it completely covers the page. If I switch it to contain, you can see that that background color shows up a little bit on the sides because the image isn't quite big enough to fit in there. I can wallpaper it, although the image itself is too big. Um, by default, so I can use the width and sort of force it to um, force it to do that. And uh, I can also say I just want a single image in there, which then combines it with the uh, background color that I have selected up here too. Uh, so they can be, you know, these things can be layered on top of each other with the background color. I'm going to switch this back to cover and make sure my parallax is on again, and then. Um, we can move down to this next section to show you the next fun thing um, with the background color. I'll play around with that since this doesn't have an image. Um, as before, you can update the background color, use the color picker, um, find a color that you like. But there's a new feature here for adding gradients. This is, uh, this is a really fun tool. This allows you to create some very professional looking background gradients without having to do work in a graphic program. Um, trying to make these things in a graphic program is very uh, challenging. Some, sometimes depends on the tool that you're using. Uh, but now you have a nice way of making gradients that is easy. Um, you can change the angle, add more colors. For example, if I really want to make this thing colorful, I can pop another couple of color stops in here. And uh, you can see how that, that has blended this. Um, you know, and as you change the rotation, it changes the look of it. And the nice thing about this is if you, um, one really nice thing about gradients, they work well on all devices. So they're gonna look perfectly smooth. They're gonna look great um, no matter what device you use. So right now, this is the desktop preview. Oops. Um, if I switch over here to a tablet view, you can see that the gradient has scaled up at that space. And if I do the same thing here for mobile, you can see that it's stretched now to fit that space as well. So it automatically grows to fit whatever the size is that you're looking, which is a really nice, Really nice touch there. The uh, 
Gradients themselves can be edited just by dragging the colors around. And you can even add multiple gradients. Um, let me let me pop this back this way, um, kind of the way it was. That was a nice color progression. Now if I take this and I say add a gradient, what it's going to do is going to duplicate that gradient. Um, and now if I rotate this, you can kind of see what it's doing back there. Actually, um, let me dial down the opacity on all these so you can see how this, um, you know, let them blend together more. Uh, and now what we have here is sort of this very, you know, it's a little more subtle color change background um, by just by layering a couple of gradients. So you can really make some, some nice visual effects there by playing around with some of these settings. Um, now I'm gonna show you one other little neat thing with gradients that um, I've recently learned as well. Let me delete these out of here. So they do blend with the background color. So like now if I change the background color, you can see that does change the gradient itself because I've got, oops, um, I don't need two gradients, because they've got the opacity um, in them. Like if I make them more intense or less intense, you can see that the colors blend more or less with the background. So you could, if you just wanted to just slightly blend in a little bit of color like this does, um, that blends it in there without having to make it super strong. Um, it would also, yeah, anyway, there's, you can play around with blending, but here's a fun little setting. Um, if you, there's this position slider, you can choose where that, or how that uh, gradient is allocated in terms of um, where the color divide is. And this, on the second color, it's a lot more obvious, but there's also kind of a neat thing you could do with it here. If you position one slider past the other, like color one, if it's color, past color two, you can actually make a hard line here, um, which can be kind of neat when it comes to, you know, maybe doing an effect like this uh, without having to create a background image. So this is a, a nice little addition and this isn't a pure color. You can see it's kind of blending with the background a little bit um, as I play with the opacity. So position, color, opacity, these are all, there's so many sliders here, you could probably spend an hour making the perfect gradient. <laughs> um, so let me close that out or, or delete that gradient, I mean. The other, uh, the next awesome feature here is a background video. Uh, this, when you choose a video, it completely replaces your image in any background color that you have, but you can have it pop in a little video here. And uh, I mean, there's one that's in here by default, just so you've got something to look at, but you can change the video. Um, I don't think this account has a, different, has a different one to play around with, but you would just click on it. It would show up here, just like with your pictures. But there's links here to a couple of free photo or not photo, well, they do photos too, but um, there are a couple of sites that have free videos. Um, you, can, you can find them, uh, find a video that you want, click on it, um, click the free download, and then um, come over here and hit the plus sign and then it will go into your account and then you can use it on your background video. So it used to be really hard to get this in here. It was possible, you had to go in and like added some code and whatever, but now the background video is just a few clicks away from having a really cool video back there. And you can layer it. So if I come back over to my style tools, just looking at this, you know, the first thing I see is, well, that video is really neat, but I really can't read the text anymore. Like this is completely illegible to me. So what I'll do is I'll find a little spot here where I can edit the entire, um, everything all at once here. So I'll click on that. And let me add in my background color um, with this little opacity slider, maybe make it darker, or maybe I've got a brand color that I wanna mix in there, but I'll just go with black for now since it's nice and simple. Um, that's still pretty legible, or it's better, I should say, but this might be a case where a little bit of background blur uh, would be nice to make it a little less distinct. And then perhaps I wanna add a little, um, I wanna come over here and edit the section background and change the, add, add the padding on the top and the bottom so you can see more of the video. Uh, and, you know, again, these can also be, um, actually, where is it, right there. So this can, you know, these can be layered. If you wanted to, you could come in here, add some rounded corners, pop a drop shadow on there, element shadow. Um, you know, there's just, these things can all be layered on top of each other. There's just like limitless possibilities in terms of what you can do. Um, you know, the shadow works on top of there just to create that extra depth. It's really a nice, nice effect. So if I go over here and preview it, you'll see the video there. Took my computer a second to load it here, but you see the video there with this um, on top, um, exactly how it's designed. So 
you can still have that motion, sort of that visual interest of having that motion on there, but still have whatever it is that you're trying to do more legible because, you know, as you saw before, it was kind of hard to read that text on top. So there's really a way of making this work with um, any sort of video that you might have back there by being able to drop this little shadow behind things like this. Um, so let me go back to the section editor. That was the background image or background video. Um, nice, fun addition, really like that. Uh, if you wanna, so the, the parallax, what that is, um, you've seen that on the top section. Uh, I'm just gonna turn out the video for now so my computer slows down a little or speeds up a little bit. But um, so the parallax, what that is, um, you've seen that, I demonstrated that earlier. That's where, see like these words are traveling faster over the background than the actual background is. If I were to turn off parallax, um, oops, I need to click this section. If I were to turn off parallax, in preview, you'll see what the difference is here. The text in the background move at the same pace. It's sort of like they're all part of one solid thing um, versus the parallax makes it a little, it gives it a little bit more visual interest as they're moving around here um, with the text flying over the top. Uh, and of course you can layer on those effects like I was showing you a little bit earlier too. More section backgrounds. Um, so the padding, I showed you that a couple minutes ago, you can play around with the padding on the top and the bottom. Uh, you can change the section width. I will show you that here on this uh, on this one, since this actually shows a pretty good uh, effect. I'm also going to change my background color. So I've got a little bit um, more of a color to look at. Um, going back here, we've got the section width. So if I go normal, it always puts a margin on here and it kind of locks it into, I think it's like four different sizes depending on your screen size. If you want something that's completely the full width of your screen, you can say, I want this section width to be full. Uh, in this case, I'd probably put a little padding on the side of the element here. Like if I come in here and maybe I find this um, right side, wherever that was right here, and uh, maybe I need a little padding on the right to make it so that it's not quite so squished up against the side. I can absolutely do that there. Um, so let me go back to normal here. But, Full is really useful if you have an image that you really want to have all or something that you really want to have width to width or edge to edge on your screen. Uh, it can sort of break up the website flow a little bit and add a little more visual interest. Uh, and then we have our um, stickiness features. Let me show you that. So the stickiness features, this is probably easiest demo demonstrated. Um, before I do that, I'll show you the preview so you have this. Um, so this is this is the built-in menu bar on the top that actually always sticks to the top. But you can see like this home lifestyle work with me and blog scrolls up under as you scroll down. And as you get to the bottom, um, this footer here um, stays there. It's sort you know just scrolls up and then scrolls away. If I were to come in here and click on this, edit this section, and then say I want that to stick to the top, and then come to the bottom here and say I want that to stick to the bottom, I'll show you what that looks like in the preview here. So now as I scroll up, this top bar isn't gonna go away. You know, it moves with the page a little bit until it starts moving, but it's always gonna be there. And as you can see here, now this footer is here as well. That's stuck to the bottom as I move through the page. Um, so those allow you to create some additional visual interest or another good use for like a, the footer, the sticky footer or the sticky header. is if you have a sales page with uh, some sort of button on it that says like, you know, buy or, you know, get started now or, or something like that. There's a big call to action in there. You can have that float with them on the page the entire time so they don't have to scroll and find a button. Um, that can help increase some, you know, conversions if you're looking for that as well. And then we also have the section visibility. What this does, and these, this is actually duplicative of what's up here. So there's um, these section icons. This, the little panel here has the ability to, define whether a section appears on mobile, port, uh, mobile tablet, uh, small screen, large screen computers. Um, so you can turn those on and off. Like if, so what I'll do, the, really the, the purpose of this is if you have a section that just doesn't work well on let's say a mobile phone and you wanna design something simpler for that mobile device, you can make a copy of it and then say this top one, I'm gonna turn that off for, um, for phone and tablet but then I'm, you know, leave it on for computer and then I'll turn off the computer on this second one. And I'll show you what the, how this looks. I'll take the second copy here and change the background. I'll actually just add a gradient on there. So it's really obvious to see as we're switching between. But I'll preview it on the computer. So the computer should show this white background one here now because you can see that's turned on. 
And when I get down to tablet and phone, it's going to have this background uh, as well. So let me preview it on the computer here. You can see it's got the white bar there. I still have the stick on it, stickiness. Now, if I switch it, okay. If I switch it over here, you can see now suddenly, and I don't, this section, uh, you know, now suddenly this is um, that the colored one as it was is going to be over here. I have that background gradient. So as I move to mobile as well, that's going to um, have that same gradient on there because I have that chosen. But as I move bigger, I can. So that's, it probably wouldn't do this exact example with the background color, but it usually is when you have something, uh, there's some formatting differences there. So, um, so that's the, uh, Got to be mindful of the time here too, um, but so that's kind of the um, the the color and style editing changes that we have here. Uh, there's a few other exciting things that I'd like to pop in here as well. Like you can now, um, as you you've probably seen them 50 times here now during the preview. As I'm mousing around, there's this little pop up that appears there. You can now, and that's how you collect leads on a page. Now you can actually have it so that um, the form appears on the page. So the easiest way to do that is to click this plus sign or click the add button up there, go over to the form tab and um, choose one of these different forms. These are just different layouts for essentially the same thing. I'm gonna choose the one that's just the form. It'll put this little form tag in there uh, and this will show up on the preview. When you go to preview it, it's going to have the form right in line on the page. And I'm going to actually come over here quickly and take off the sticky bottom because it's kind of taking up more space than I'd like at the moment. Um, but you can see now that there's this form right on the page. Previously, you could only have this in the pop-up. Now you're probably looking at this and like, well, that's, and the first thing I think is that's way too big. Um, well, first of all, I probably want it below that, that header, but even so, that's probably still too big. Um, but there is a setting for that now. If I come in here, you can actually just click on it if you'd like, or double, uh, well, actually, when you're editing the content, you can click on it takes you to the form tab and there's a few different set or what this does clicking on there is essentially the same thing as clicking on settings, clicking on the leads tab, and then coming down here. Um, the, the lead capture form showing in, you can choose between showing in a pop-up or on the page. By default, it's in a pop-up unless you add that section like I did, then it will be on the page. You can change the button style. That is the download now button was the default blue that's in there. But let's say I'd like to shrink this up a little bit. And um, what I'm gonna do is delete everything and uh, go like this and highlight this and delete this stuff here. Okay, so I'm gonna make that a, a thin one-liner there. And then let's say I don't want phone anymore. I can now, this is the new setting. You can show the form fields, I'll say three columns. Now with a few quick clicks like that, as I scroll down now, you'll see that the form has shrunken down and I've got this headline and your lead form right there, right on the page. And you can, if you don't like this you know, sort of plain white looking background, you can come in here and you can do what you want to. Like if I want to add the, the gradient in there just for easy demo, you know, that layer is behind the form uh, as well. So you can get that look that you're just looking for um, to go with the form, which is really, really cool. This is, uh, you know, versus a pop-up, which there's uses for the pop-up and there's uses for this form. So that's a very, uh, very useful thing. So let me show you, we've got a few more minutes here. Let me show you a couple of other powerful features that are tucked away in this update as well. When you're adding a field now, um, let's say you wanna collect street address for somebody, you can collect the street address, uh, add a new field here. And I say, I can assign that actually now right into the contact. Previously, uh, it would only go into the email. And if you were like trying to collect address, it would only go, um, it would really only go into that email and you'd have to manually add it into the contact. Now you can have these fields. There's a number of fields you can play around with. Contact type, street address, city, state, postal code, country, uh, a few other fields here as well that you can have it go directly into. The other thing you can do here, let me, uh, I'll just call this on my field. And this is a really powerful addition as well. So when you have a list item now and you're editing the list, um, I will add item one, item two, and item three. This looks pretty similar to the way it was before if you've ever played around with the form editor. But now, if you click on this little tag, if somebody chooses this item, you can have it so that it will tag them, uh, run a campaign and run an automation if you'd like, uh, just all based on them choosing that one item. So this is really useful if you have 
uh, if you have like a new client intake form or uh, maybe somebody just signed up for your a free download and then like to survey them and see what that they're <clears throat> see what they're interested in. Um, you know, maybe you've got five or six things that you like to regularly uh, email people about five or six different topics. You could then have them choose which ones that they're interested in and have it tag them automatically so that you would know. So this segmenting, this is some really, really powerful in terms of automation, automating your business. Um, this can be something that you can do to um, really take that to the next, to the next level there. Um, yeah, so I, I think I think that's it. Um, actually, there is, I just thought of one more thing. There is a new page section here as well. Um, the recent blog post has been reformatted a little, a little bit better so that, I don't know if this account has any blog posts in it. Um, it does, okay. So it does a better job of aligning the headlines. Um, if you've played around with this section before and your headline, your blog post title was a little bit longer, it wouldn't align the images and it wouldn't align the buttons unless so your titles, images, and buttons are all kind of the same size, but but now um, now we'll actually align those. So with that, I think I think that's it in terms of um, the features. Lots to pack into the hour here. I see we have some Q and A um, and uh, some chat. So you know, we'll hop over over to that. Um, cool. Let me stop my share here. Awesome. So that's a lot. <laughs> it's, a lot, a lot. <laughs> it's, it's so much to play around with. Um, I see a lot of excitement here. Uh, yes, uh, we're super, super excited to see what you guys come up with. Uh, There's some questions that we did answer in the chat. If you got missed, please make sure that you come over to the Q&A and let's talk about that here. Lynn, uh, you asked a question about uh, pros and cons for using webinar format versus Zoom meetings if your plan is to reuse or sell your content. Uh, it, there's not really a hard and fast rule for this, but I can give you a couple of cases uh, that you could kind of use as ideas. So um, in one particular instance, uh, I have, uh, and I don't know if this is something that you're a part of or not, but on the good oiling side of, of what we do, uh, we have a personal brand intensive and it's got, uh, the first time I ran it, uh, we did, it was live Zoom calls and it was meetings. Uh, now, um, obviously I edited out the parts where there were more interactions and things like that uh, so that it just focused on the content when it was time to resell uh, the finished product. Uh, so, um, and then the next time around when we offered it again, um, I used those live videos again with the edits and those were put into the finish product that has a dollar value on it. I'll give you one more example. Um, one of my clients who really just did not want to add on anything else to her retract well system and wanted to launch a program uh, and then take the replay, uh, basically take, take her live launch and uh, turn it automated. What she did for her webinars that she uses in her funnel uh, is she used a Zoom meeting and she streamed it into a private Facebook group. So in order for people to attend the live webinar, they needed to be in the Facebook group. And then the recording that was preserved of that presentation looked just like a webinar would because when you're streaming into the Facebook group, it's just you. Right, and when you're sharing your screen, it's just your screen, it's just you talking. Uh, so that's a really interesting option. So. I don't personally typically recommend, uh, unless your business model is based on filling seats in webinars, that you have that that larger monthly expense. I think that there are uh, more um, more cost effective ways to go about running things. In in my personal professional opinion. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. And uh, and Randy, if you want any clarifications, or maybe Greg, if you want to look in the chat and scroll up and see Randy's questions and my answers to them, so you can make sure I'm correct there, <laughs> that would be cool. Also, hi Randy, it's been a while. Um, let's see, I think that's it. Yep, just looking at your answers there. Um, in the case of you wanted different effects on mobile versus desktop, you'd have to copy it like I was showing you, and then make the changes to one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, that would work. Yeah, like you could have one section like that are that, like duplicated sections that you modify and one is just available to view on uh, mobile and, and, and small tablet and the other one would just be desktop vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, the other question, so when you edit the page, when does it become live? Whenever you click the save button, it will go and publish it on your site. Um, the undo is just how far back is that undo right now within that editor pop-up you can undo within the editor pop-up but once you close out of there that then that sort of puts in the changes on the page mm -hmm. yep 
Awesome. Good questions, you guys. I'm excited to see what you create with this. Uh, and there will be more trainings uh, on these topics, promise, because there's obviously we opened a Pandora's box here. Um, I'm, I am most excited. I'm curious what you guys are most excited about. I am personally most excited about conditional response, about being able to take someone's answers to questions and sending custom campaigns and follow-up plans and tags and stuff onto those contacts so that you can have a more automated workflow for you and you can have a more customized experience for your leads. Awesome. Okay, a couple more questions. How do you get a photo on your Zoom account when your camera is off? I don't know. That is, um, you, we can set that for you. That's currently not available through the system, but if you email support, we can add it to your uh, Zoom account there. So it's quick Perfect. and simple. We'll get that done for you. Okay, Melissa has a question. Uh, on the button width, the font size mm -hmm. will automatically be adjusted to any way for that to not happen. The width of the button does not change the size of the text. Uh, but if you change the right. size of the button, it's like scaling the whole thing up. Just be mindful of like, make sure you really check your mobile when you do that. Because I totally did that when I was playing around with this the other day. I was like, Greg, why is the button wider than this section? This is weird. <laughs> He's like, well, it's more, your button's more than 100%. I'm like, well, that's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a neat effect if you want it, but if you're not expecting it, it can be kind of unexpected too. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Awesome, thanks you guys for being here. Uh, we will be back next week. Uh, keep your suggestions coming in for new training topics. Uh, we're always on the lookout for those and excited to provide more great content for you. So uh, we will see you then back ne next week, 2 p.m. Eastern Thursday. Have a great weekend, Bye. guys. Bye.